Today, I have three secrets to forming healthy habits. We often try and try and try. We have all the best intentions in the world and yet we struggle. We don't seem to be able to follow through. Maybe we set New Year's intentions. Maybe we set resolutions. Maybe we set goals. Maybe we just set intentions and we have all the best intentions, but somehow it doesn't pan out. I have got three specific things that we must do if we are going to be able to form healthy habits and get rid of old habits. Welcome to the channel. I'm Kim Marie. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe, click the like button, let people know about this. This channel is all about empowering women to find the empowered woman within them, supporting you with tips and tools and guidance and ideas and inspiration to tap into that empowered woman that you know is within you. All right, so today's video, I wanna start today's video by sharing a bit of my own story and how I came to find this. Now, I'm gonna offer it, there's three basic steps, but we all know that the process can be so much harder than simply looking at the steps. And so I wanna preface this by saying, for the sake of full disclosure, that yes, I followed these three steps and I was also doing a lot of inner work on myself. I was also doing the work of getting to the bottom of some of my subconscious beliefs, my, um, the ways in which I would lean toward extremes. And by the way, if you wanna do some of that kind of work, there is a free download in the comments for my balance and empowerment cards, totally free, an amazingly powerful tool to help you navigate extremes and find that balance so that you are not going to extremes. And let's face it, when we are going into a habit space, we often are in an extreme of some sort, right? We're stuck in one way of doing things, one way of, making things happen. And we often have to kind of swing in another direction, but how can we do that, right? If we're in bad habits, how can we do that? So my story started with, well, I struggled with my weight for a long time and I love sweet things. I still love sweet things, but I was very, very sugar addicted, okay? And I knew for a long time, long after I learned how horribly addictive sugar itself is. And I'm talking about the white refined sugar, not just basic, um, you know, things that are called or considered sugar, but the idea of white refined sugar that is truly toxic to the body. Okay. And I knew I wanted to quit it. I wanted to stop eating things with white sugar in it, but I struggled because I was so ingrained in it and I wanted those things. And I, every time I tried to deny myself those things, it didn't work. Everything I I, I I would try to do a certain diets or certain you know um, motivational things and nothing seemed to work. But what really began to change things for me is when I started to look at how do I want to show up? How do I want to feel? What experience do I want to have? And then when I looked at that experience of how I want to feel. I started to look at what was causing me to not feel that way. And I knew for sure that eating anything with sugar in it was causing me to not feel the way that I wanted to feel. I wanted to feel energy. I wanted to feel empowered. I wanted to feel a sense of strength and motivation. And whenever I would have sugars, I would crash at the end of the day. I'd get really tired. I'd get really irritable and I'd even sometimes get depressed. So I had to decide how do I want to feel and then do what it was that I wanted more than what I felt like doing, right? I might feel like having a cookie or I loved chocolate croissants <laughs> and I might feel like going to the coffee shop and getting that. But I had to ask myself, okay, you feel like that, but what do you really want for yourself? This is about aligning with your values. I've done other videos about aligning with your core values. Um, check those out. And uh, in fact, you might even wanna take a look at a course that I have called Becoming Effective, which, hel which helps you align with your core values. It helps you tune into that for the sake of being more effective. And that includes being able to create healthy patterns, healthy habits in your life, okay? So the first, 
piece of these three secrets to forming healthy habits has to do with what do I want to feel? And then choosing according to that. You don't do what you feel like doing, you, do, you choose according to how you want to feel, how you want to show up, what you want to create, what you want to happen. So we all want things. And then we wonder, okay, yeah, I, I, I want it, but I'm not doing it or I'm not getting there. Chances are it's because you're not doing things in alignment with what you want. You're doing things based on what you feel like doing, right? Or what seems good or comforting in the moment. Sugar was super comforting to me. So I would often feel like going to the refrigerator and doing something. But if I thought about, well, how do I want to feel tomorrow? How do I want to feel later today? How do I want to you know, um, feel in my body, then I had to think about what I want to feel, not what I feel like. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if there's any questions in the comments about that. That is the first piece. You have to do it because you want to, not because you think you should, not because you feel like it, not because somebody's telling you to, um, you know, not because of some standard. You have to do it because you actually want to. That's the beginning of forming a healthy habit. And if you're not sure you want to, or you continue to never do it, you have to ask yourself, do I really want this? That's an important piece of choosing healthy habits. Now, the second one is practice. I know you're not gonna like that one, most people don't. Most people wanna know that they can just quickly make the choice and that's it. But the reality is a habit is a pattern that is formed in our bodies, in our brains, that is neural pathways that form based on repetitive experience. Right? If we repeatedly get triggered by an emotion and go to the refrigerator to pull out a treat, a sugary treat, that is what our brain is going to expect every time we get triggered by that emotion, right? That we're gonna, we're gonna numb it or soothe it or be rewarded for some reason by it with a sugary treat as an example. So the only way to change it is to practice. So you have to choose based on what you want, not what you feel like, but consider what are you going to choose and then practice choosing that. For me, it was just choosing to breathe. I breathed through that longing. I learned to let myself feel what I was feeling and not try to fill a void or soothe it or numb it with sugary treats as an example. Okay, I learned to be with it. Sometimes I would substitute something like a piece of fruit where it wasn't white sugar, but it was something healthy and nourishing for me that was not gonna cause me to crash, but still satisfied something in me. So I, I took baby steps. Part of the idea of practicing is taking tiny, tiny baby steps. It doesn't mean don't eat when you feel triggered to eat, but maybe you choose what to eat that will make you feel differently than say refined sugar using my example, okay? The final and third thing. So we have first the concept of what do you want to feel and following what you want rather than what you feel like. The second is practice and using baby steps to practice. And the third is compassion, okay? If you wanna form healthy habits, there is a need to have compassion for those around you who are used to you having other habits and they might not like it when you change your habits. But most importantly, you need to have compassion for yourself because it's hard to change a habit. You're going to mess up. I did not suddenly stop sugar and never go back to it ever again. Okay, but I know when I fall off that wagon or if I, if I trip up on that, at this point in my life, I. I don't have refined sugar unless I'm like visiting someone or once in a while um, I might have a treat or something like that, uh, you know, with a friend. But most things I do, I still love my sweets, but now they're, they're natural sweets like a piece of fruit or maybe some honey or maple syrup or things like that that I know don't make me crash in the same way white sugar did. I did have to fully detox from it first. I had to really be very disciplined of doing what I wanted rather than what I felt like in order to get there. And in that process of being disciplined, I had to be compassionate with myself. I had to not beat myself up if I messed up and ate something that didn't work for me or made me feel bad. I had to trust myself enough, love myself enough, be compassionate toward myself enough to 
get back and start again and just know that I was taking baby steps and it was gonna take time. It's like that old saying, you know, two steps forward, one step back. Sometimes that's how the initial movement goes. And then it might be, you know, 10 steps forward, one step back. It might be, it might be, you know, 10 steps forward, two or three steps back. It, it, it varies and it changes. And for us to think that we're gonna move forward and never slip up, never fall back into these old habits or be tempted to go there, that's being unfair. It's not being compassionate for the reality of being human and the challenges that we go through. So three secrets to forming healthy habits. I hope those were super helpful. Leave a note in the comments to let me know what kinds of habits you've had a challenge shifting into and maybe what kinds of habits you're having a challenge shifting out of. I would love to offer more videos, share what kinds of things you'd love for me to talk about. Um, maybe it's around habits, maybe it's around lifestyle, maybe it's around some other realm that you would like to feel more empowered with. Share in the comments and let me know. I look forward to seeing you next time. <music>